It was funny. One summer of anime, I was reading this really cute manga about this girl who maxed out her level by killing nothing but slimes. The same time as everyone else was getting into another anime called That Time I Was Reincarnated as a Slime. Super weird that these two things happened fairly close to each other. Oh well. Let's talk about killing some slimes. Welcome back to another video here on Mummified Games. My name is Tony and today we're going to be taking a look at the RPG roguelike hack by Super Try. This is another one of those roguelikes where you're asked to pick one of three characters created at random and then run through these dungeons and try to make it as far as you can. The game has a heavy retro feel to it and I mean heavy retro as in they let you turn on CRT scan lines and a faux dirty screen to make it feel rough and hard to see. Ah yes, the anarcho retro style. So in love with old graphics that we're going to actively make the experience as basic as possible on your nice clean 1080p monitors. The chaotic evil of game graphics. Luckily, if you don't want to play with dust and dirt all over your screen, then grab some monitor cleaner. And if you don't want the fake dirt in the game, then you can turn it off along with the CRT scan lines. Doing this will make it all crisp and clean with sharp pixels. Anyway, moving on from the small personal settings. The game starts when you first load it up and asks you to import the date, but no matter what you type in, it does the correct date. And that was super cool when it happened. You can just press the same key over and over again to process through the intro, but it also might be fun to, you know, pretend that you're actually typing these things in. I don't have any video of this happening because when I tried to start the game, I forgot to turn on OBS. So yeah, sorry. So once you're in, I highly recommend you play the tutorial and figure out what everything means. The symbols and art that exist in this game are fine. And once you know what they stand for, it makes sense. But just jumping right into the game, it can be a little deep and hard to parse what exactly the symbols mean and what they look like. When you're in the game, hitting I will bring up your inventory so you can see what you have equipped, similar to all the other RPGs out there. All the actions you can do while in game are bound to the keys one through four and also Q, W, E, R at the top left of your keyboard compared to ability buttons in some MOBA or MMO games. QWER being reserved for special skills that your equipped items give you. And then there are one through four that are quick locations for consumable items. Examples being potions and other limited use things. There's also a companion that comes with you and fights the monsters while you're in the dungeon. But that's sort of the basics. There are tons of skills and items that you could use in the game, and it would take forever to explain what each and everything does. Just right clicking and holding over whatever it is in the game explains what the spell is. Once you get out of the tutorial, the actual game will then start, and then you can select one of three different characters with random skills and stats at the start. They're nowhere near your traditional characters. Sometimes you can be a sorcerer, that's a great fighter. Sometimes you can get a necromancer mushroom that spews spores everywhere. And then there's sometimes a werewolf that you can play with as well. It's hard to tell you about this game because there isn't a lot that sets it apart from other roguelikes. The music is fairly basic. And now that I've stopped playing the game, I could not tell you what any of it sounded like. I know there was sort of a chime sounding song that would play when you're in the shops, and that was different from the other songs. But what it sounds like, I could not tell you. Oh, there is a fun idea they put into the shop mechanic. There's no money or currency in this game, so the shopping experience is a barter deal where you select the item you want to buy and then select some items that you would want to trade for. And the game gives you a percentage of if that deal would go through or not. That's actually interesting, especially since the chance of the trade going through is the same window where the game would show you the likelihood of the attack you're about to do will land or not. So that's fun and interesting. There's a sight range thing where you are only able to... There's just nothing really to talk about with this one. I'll, it's just all more dungeon crawling, fighting more enemies. There's a story going on about the program being corrupted slightly. And there's this old man that I was halfway through level three or four when I was thinking, okay, when's this guy gonna turn on me? I don't know why I thought that was going to happen. After beating the skeleton boss, he said something to me that I thought was super ominous, all while the screen was glitching out a bit, very weird. Having played this for over an hour and a half, I didn't get really far into the story part of this roguelike. Again, fault of the genre more than anything else. Your story can't be super long or hard to reach if the player is going to die over and over again. 
While playing this game, I found myself taking into account the same sort of fighting style that I've adopted in Crypto the Necrodancer, where if the monster I'm fighting is about to attack, I just move back one and they have to spend their turn moving forward. The problem with this strategy is that the game doesn't actually show you how long it is until the other character will take their turn. So you might move back one and then it turns out you had more time until they do their thing. I feel like this one is going to be the same thing I say about most of the games that came in the racial justice bundle. If you bought the bundle, then sure, go play the game since you have it. Go find it in your collection and give it a whirl. But as for a recommendation to go out and pick this up, I'd say unless you really need that crunchy pixel roguelike RPG in your life, then sure. If not, then give it a pass. If you played this game, what were your thoughts on it? If you haven't played it, are there any other aggressively retro games out there that you would want me to try? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I just remembered I never did a tournament update at the end of July. I think that since I didn't do a full month, I'm going to wait until the end of August. That way I could have a bunch to filter through. Not as much as the first one, but obviously still a good chunk to push forward with. And I'm sure I'll get to another tool or book review soon if anybody was looking for one of those. I'm giving myself a little bit of time every day to read through some of the actual books in this bundle. The next book club might not be a bundle, but a full book by itself. Obviously, I'll keep you informed. But for now, you all do the YouTube dance. Like, sub, bell, comment, share with somebody you know. And as always, friends, keep digging, and we'll make it out sometime. See you in the next one.